when you sell your house, you want to net the most money, sell within your time frame, and avoid stress as much as possible. In the next few minutes, I'm going to show you exactly how to sell a home in Los Angeles. Hi, my name is Matias, and I'm your trusted Los Angeles realtor. The first question we must answer is what happens after the sale. In other words, you have to start with the end in mind and work your way back. If you are selling your primary residence, for instance, that is the home you live in, where are you going? You must have a clear plan. Are you moving away? Are you downsizing? Meaning, are you shopping for a smaller home? Are you upsizing? Meaning, do you need more space? Or are you investing? Or are you using the profit from the sale to pay off debt? No matter what your needs, we must have a clear plan in mind. The last thing you want is to go into escrow with a good buyer and lose them because you have nowhere to go. You also don't want to test the market. You don't want to try and sell your house. Do or do not. There is no try. Selling a vacant home is easier than selling one that is occupied by the homeowners. And selling a home with renters in place adds an extra layers of complexities. Now, there are strategies to work with owner-occupied homes as well as with tenants-occupied homes. These are mostly related to how we make the home available for showings to prospective buyers. Now, we'll talk about that in a minute. Once we have a plan, it is time to decide if it is better to sell as is or invest in repairs and renovations prior to the sale. I have a video just about that, so please check it out. But in short, there are four factors to consider prior to deciding whether to sell as is or make repairs and renovations. Market conditions, costs, liabilities, and time. Some repairs may be necessary. Others may be a waste of time and money. Do not get in the remodeling business unless that's what you do. Now it's time to put together a list of known upgrades and defects. We don't need to inspect or investigate here. Just make a list of what you know. Was the roof replaced two years ago? Write it down. Did a fire burn half the kitchen down? Write it down. Water damage, insurance claims? Write it down. Amazing sunset views from the shower window? Write it down. Sharing anything you know will help craft a story to tell potential buyers. No one knows your home as well as you do, so you should help write its story. I sold a home once, and as I walked through the property for the very first time, the owner stopped and pointed at a spot in the terrace and said that he would sit there with his wife every morning holding hands and looking the most amazing sunrise illuminate the trees in the, on the horizon. To him, it was the best thing in the world. And that image was so vivid that when I hosted an open house, I would walk potential buyers to the very spot and share that magic story. It really made a difference knowing this. Let's start telling your story. And if you know nothing about the house because you inherited it from your third uncle twice removed and you live in Brazil, well, that's okay too. This is a good time to talk about the importance of title insurance. It's never too early to make sure you have the right to sell the house. I know what you're thinking. You are thinking that this is silly, but actually you'd be surprised about what I've seen over the years. You know what? Life happens. Divorces, deaths, refinancing, trust, quit claim deeds, all of these things can impact title insurance if they were not recorded properly. Finding out sooner than later will make things much easier. Now, it's time to start figuring out the list price. This is not the market value, and this is not how much you or I think your house is worth. The list price is part of the marketing strategy. Who is your competition and who has already won the game? Let me explain. Those who have already won the game are similar properties which have already sold within the last 90 days. And your competition are those properties which are relatively new to the market. That overpriced house that's been on the market for 452 days and no one has bought 
is not your competition. They lost the game a long time ago. We, on the other hand, still have our chance to make a great first impression. If you know nothing about real estate, and will only come away with one thing from this video. Let it be the understanding that properly pricing a home is one of the most important aspects of how to sell a home in Los Angeles. Once again, this is not an appraisal, and this is not about market value. This is not what Zillow or Redfin say or what your neighbors think. This is a marketing strategy. So you can net the most money, sell within your time frame. And avoid stress. Notice how I said to sell within your time frame and not sell quickly or sell fast. Why is that? Because holding costs are different for everyone. Roughly defined, holding costs are ongoing expenses incurred by a property owner while they hold on to the property. These are mortgage payments, property taxes, insurance, utilities, etc. etc. Maybe you are selling a house that is generating rental income. So you can afford to take a bit more time. Or maybe you're in pre-foreclosure, so the sooner you sell, the better. Or maybe you need money to buy your next home and have high mortgage payments or a reverse mortgage. Or maybe you want it free and clear. No matter what, let's figure out your time frame and plan accordingly. So now you figure out your exit strategy. You figure out the repairs and upgrades, if any, We've crafted your story, we have a list price, and so it is time to think about that very first impression. The look and feel your property will have when buyers shop and compare it to other options. Does it need to be staged, virtually staged, partially staged, redecorated, left as is, or does it show better empty? There's a good reason to choose any of these options. It all depends on the property and the circumstances. Full-blown staging is great for vacant properties and involves a design and selection process. Not all staging companies are the same. Look at their previous work and that is a great way to get an idea of the results. Partial staging is either selective staging, meaning that you decide to stage one bedroom and the living room while leaving the rest of the house empty, or you do a mix of your furniture and stage furniture. Some smaller spaces are well suited for digital staging for two reasons. Digital staging is much cheaper, but also buyers are better off seeing small rooms when they are empty. The last thing you want is for a small space to feel crammed because of big stage furniture. Now, a word of warning on digital staging. Some of it looks awful, but it doesn't have to be that way. We will choose wisely. The option of redecorating is to use what you already have and spruce it up a little. Adding a couple of throw pillows, plants, or strategically placed rugs can make a difference. There are professionals who can help you with this or plenty of places where you could find inspiration. This method works well if you're currently living in the house. Most homes in need of maintenance, those are fixers, show best completely empty. Even digital staging is inappropriate for some of these homes. Now, don't forget curb appeal. Landscaping is another important aspect of the preparation. Trimming overgrown vegetation, pruning trees, and mowing lawns can make a big difference. There's also something to be said about outdoor staging, especially around pools, cabanas, and fixed gazebos. And now, lights, camera, and action. When it comes time for photography, we'll need to decide if floor plans rendering are a good option, if you need to do 3D tours, aerial photography, and twilight photography. Also, videography is an option that you may want to explore. Before the property goes on the market, some important decisions will have to be made about making the property available for showings to potential buyers. From private showings by appointment to open houses, and from installing a lockbox to scheduling group showings, there's no one answer fits all. But the more planning we do ahead of time, the easier it will be. Also, keep in mind that you may have a sign at the property that says for sale. 
Now, this can be a problem if you're still living in the house. This is why I always give my clients who are still living in the house, or even if they have renters, a stack of my business cards. Because when somebody shows up unannounced, it is a great idea to give them a card and say, please call my agent. We've made it this far and we haven't even talked about selling yet, but all the work you do prior to going on the market will take stress off of you once things start getting crazy. In the second part of this video, we will discuss what to expect when the property goes on the market, how to deal with buyers, and most importantly, how to negotiate repairs if that's necessary. There is still so much to cover, but we laid the foundation for success. If you found this video useful, don't forget to like, subscribe, and help me spread the word. If I don't hear from you sooner, I will see you in the next video. And until next time, explore boldly and live passionately in LA. Bye.